Good afternoon. It is Friday afternoon and uh, I'm just going to tell you this little story because I know you like me little stories. Most of you know I was a foster mother to 39 kids. I've got four kids of my own, 13 grandchildren and 17 great-grandchildren. So that was a little black spot then. It's not. It's a gap. Oh, God. get on with it. Anyway, I've had 39 foster children and people often say to me, well, how did you come to get into that? Well, at the time, um, I'd done it anyway. It, it, I needed um, I needed the money to get central eating and to get double glazing. And I only took teenagers in. And some of you might say, that's the wrong reason to do things like that. I only took teenagers in, what nobody else would take in. They were all taking babies in and that. But no, I went for age 15 to 19, I had, I looked after 39 of them. And it helped me, it helped me at the time. And I'm going back over 25 years, maybe. It helped me at the time. Um, so what I was telling you was, when... <clears throat> what I was getting at was when I was 13 years of age, or twins age now, my mother, my dad died when I was 11 weeks old, right? So my mum was 39 years of age when she had me. So she was like, she must have been 40 in the March because my dad died in the March. And it, oh, my God, wait to fix my hand. My dad died in the March and I was 11 weeks old then. He died on the 6th of March. Well, when I was 13, my mum uh, got TB and had to go in the hospital. Now, I had two brothers and a sister then. Our Joan, my youngest one, was a uh, she'd passed away when she was 17 months old. That's another story I'm going to tell you sometime. She passed away when she was 17 months old and uh, my mum was left with our Billy, Sam and May. And uh, I was have to try and think what I'm, what, what I'm getting at here with the thing. I don't want to mix my story up. Oh, I, so I had two brothers and a sister who were all married. I was 13. They were all married. I didn't get on with the in-laws. I didn't get on with my brother's two wives. And I, and I didn't get on with my me, um, me sister's husband. So me being a cocky cow, because I was one cocky cow when I was 13, like any 13-year-old and what have you, you know, think you know everything, don't you? But um, but you don't. You don't know everything. Anyway, they decided that the best thing for the all round for everyone was to put me in a foster home. So I didn't know what a foster home was at the time, and I just went along with it until they come to get me in the car and my mother was sobbing and didn't know why she was sobbing and she kept kissing me saying I love you, I love you. well she no she didn't, she didn't, she telling the lie. My mum never ever told me she loved me. No mothers did years ago. They didn't do it to no one. They didn't hug like we do now. They didn't hug people and say I love you and when you could come and go and love you, bye, love you. They don't they didn't do that years ago. So if you're one of them kids don't feel like, you know, you're left out. And because I did for donkey's years, I used to. Why did my mum never tell me she loved me? Why did she never give me a hug and my? Why did she always offer a cheek when she when we, I was going to bed and I'd go to kiss her? Why wouldn't she kiss me? All this played on my mind, and um, I used to think, didn't she love me? I know now when my cousin, our pa, told me years later when I was in my teens, probably had my kid, one of my kids or what have you, she told me, no, no mothers did. She said, my mother never. She said, they just didn't do that years ago. So that is my mind now. And as far as I, when I'd be going to bed at that good night, God bless mum, kiss her, and she'd go like that and put her cheek out. She'd done that because she had TB and she wouldn't let no one kiss her on the mouth, which is right, really. She wouldn't kiss anyone in case she passed anything on, so that's why she always offered me her cheek. So that 
that all leaves me mind. That you know when once I knew that. So they put me in a foster home in the Manchester. I remember sitting in the back of the car when must have been two social services come to pick me up. My mum was crying. And I remember looking out the back of the car window and waving to her, sobbing, myself, sobbing, crying. And I'm thinking, hmm? I, I, oh, I'd already said to them before they decided where they would put me. I'd already said, I'll run away. I'll run away and get back here. I'm not going in no home. And, well, that's hence why they decided to put me in Manchester. Kersel Road in Presswich, Manchester, that I lived with. Mr and Mrs Tony. Lovely people, lovely people. I had a nice time there. Uh, can't say I was abused because I wasn't a uh, great family. And I even, one of my friends, Mel McKinnell, um, took me back there. Now, I was 13 then, I'm 75 now. She took me back there last year or maybe late the year before. No, last year it was early. She offered to take me back. To the, to the, it was a normal house I lived in, 34 Kersel Road, Presswich, Manchester. And she took me back down memory lane and I even knocked on the door because I'm a nosy cow, aren't I? And I knocked on the door and that is, is Victor coming. I'll just have to tell him to shh while I'm videoing. So um, I knocked on the door and a young lad answered and I explained to him, wait, they'll just tell John. The Robin was there, so he's gone to feed him, Robin. But where was I? So I knocked on the door of the house and he asked this young lad come out, only in his 20s, and I said to him, I'm a, the house had completely changed from what I remembered it, because I remember running up. It had its own entry only attached to that house, and I used to run round the back. We never used the front way. We always went round the back, and I always remember we got shredded with every morning except Sunday morning, and we got a big fly up. Bacon egg tomatoes being still off. And then we went to church. Oh no, we went to church first and come back and we had a big fry up. So that was when I was 13 years of age. And uh, I knocked on the door and I said to the lad, I explained to them, I said, I you love, I said, I hope you don't mind. I said, I I was in a foster home in this house years ago when I was 13. I said, I must have been 72, 73 or something then. I said, and I've just come back to have a look. And when I was there, it had privets around the front. Well, it didn't have that when I went back. It was all gravel, all gravel all over the front. And I got my photo took in the front. Melanie, you took me. Thanks very much, Mel, you're the darling. Um, she took photos of me there, and I couldn't believe it. It was a big trip down memory lane, and I remember the cousin's soap factory was behind the house where I lived, and at the bottom of the road was like it was like a little runway, a pathway, where they used to go through there, and there was a stream there, a water stream, but you could drink the water there because it was one of them streams then. And, uh, well, I think you could. Never done me, no harm. I think I had many years to go to me. Anyhow... I used to go up this pathway at the bottom of this Kersel Road and then there was a golf course, I think, opposite and we used to go to church down this little passageway at the bottom of the road. So I remembered all that and that. So that's I, that's why I wasn't scared of doing fostering because I thought, well, that, that's similar to what I had to do myself. And they had, um, I remember, there was Frank Tony, uh, Evelyn Toner and Maureen Toner. And I think there was another one. One of them was a footballer. I don't know if it was Frank or what. You, uh, when I say footballer, not a big famous one. He used to play football. Uh, I think there was another bro brother. I think it might have been Tony or something like that. I can't remember the other one. But yeah, I had a good time there. And um, my mother was in. I was there for three months. And naturally when you first go there, I'm only 13 years of age, don't forget, and I'd never been away from my mother because my dad died when I was 11 weeks old, so my mother was the only one I ever knew. So I was naturally sobbing a lot, uh, crying, and oh, couldn't console me. I wanted to go home, homesick and everything. Couldn't make me way home because I was in the car that long. I felt like I was in Australia not just Manchester, up the road sort of thing. I felt felt like they dropped me off in Australia. And anyway, three months after I was there, um, I had my own bedroom and everything in there. 
um, we got a letter because she didn't have phone phone in the house then years ago. Um, got a letter to say my mother was signing herself out of Delph Lane Hospital, what she was in with the TB, and um, I was allowed home. I was going home. Oh, I was so happy, so happy, and I always remember the woman next door. But one, there was only four houses, I think, on this block I was on, uh, in thirty four Kersel Road. It so. The end house, the woman called me in and she said she had a big jar of sixpences, tanners, we called them, didn't we, sixpences then. So how old was, what year was that if I was 13, 1948, 58, 59, 60, 1961 it must have been. And she had a big sweet jar full of tanners and she said put your hand in and take as many as you can. So I did, I put my hand in, I was so mad, I thought I was rich with all this money. And put it in my pocket and that. I'm so happy with it all. And she gave me the same with um, Rose's sweets. She said, to her, help yourself to the sweets. <clears throat> help yourself to the sweets. Oh, did I help myself? I can tell you. Yeah, too true, I did. So I had them. And then uh, the social services, as I say, brought me home. And I always remember walking in my mother's house. And it must have been, I don't know, it couldn't have been Easter. Cause it was thirteen. Oh, I don't know what I don't know what month I was put there. Anyway, when I come home, it might have been Easter time. I always remember going in, and whatever season it was, my mum always had a lovely home. Always had a lovely home. One of the ones in the road that was lovely, and she had lemon draped curtains up because it was Easter, and I hope this is stuck in my mind. Lemon neck curtains all draped, and uh, with let with. Lemon uh, ribbon, holding them up in the drapes and that, and she had like a, a green and a cream, draw curtains up, and we had a green at the time, call it a leather three piece suite, but it wasn't. It was plastic, probably plastic, but the house I hadn't been back had I for three months. The house looked, oh my god. I couldn't believe how beautiful it was looking at it. And I thought, oh, my, I don't remember it being like this nice. Nothing had changed, but in my mind, it's like when you go on holiday, isn't it? You live in a room, don't you, in an apartment or in a hotel room for a week or two weeks, maybe. And because <clears throat> you're used to that and you come home to your own house and you walk in, you go, oh, my God. Oh, God, isn't the house lovely? You haven't done nothing to it. But you just, I know I do. I'm just gobsmacked. I think, oh, isn't it lovely? I didn't realise it was this nice. Well, that's what I'd done when I was 13, when I was there. So, yeah, me mother had signed herself out. And then I had me first, my eldest lad, he's, he's 56 now. Um, I had him when I was 19. And I couldn't go near my mother because she had TB years ago. Couldn't go near her for six weeks. So uh, I had to go and live in my brother's house. But I didn't get on there because I didn't get on with my sister-in-law. Um, and my mate, Flo, her mum lived in in the close where my mother lived, in the close there. And she offered to put me up. So what I'd do, I couldn't take the baby near me mum for six weeks because she had the TB. But what I did was I, the pram was outside in me mum's and I'd go next door to feed him and then put him back in the pram. And uh, overnight I'd go and sleep in me, me friend's mother's in the close round the corner from me mother, but just so I was by me mother. And then I lived with me mother till I was 25 and I got me first house Um and then I went every day after that till I was 39 when my mother passed away. And it was uh, the th third of December she passed away. And I would have been 40 on the 15th of December. And I always remember she gave me a, she gave me a tenner for my 40th birthday. And when I was 21, we would be talking about birthdays. When I was coming up to 21, she said to me, Catherine, do you want a party or do you want a, a, a coat for your 21st? Well, it was the middle of winter. I never had a coat, a decent coat to keep me warm. So what do you pick? 
So we ended up sitting in a bingo, in Longview bingo, on my 21st, but he had a nice coat to sit and keep me warm. So that's what I got for my 21st birthday. So that's another little story I thought I'd, I'd tell you about how I got into the fostering. So it must have been in me, mustn't it? And as I say, some of them keep in touch, some of them don't. A, lot of the, a hell of a lot of them don't. But Josie and Hayley do. Um, they were my favourites, actually. I had them two here at, at the same time. Josie, uh, jo what was her second name? Foster? No. Preston. What? Preston. What? Preston, was it? No, that was Hayley. Hayley Preston and Josie. Her name was Josie Cottrell then. Um, I can't remember her, the name before she got married. She, when she got married, well, I had Hayley and Josie here at the same time and what form we had with them, what form. You couldn't watch a TV programme with Hayley. I hope you're watching this, Hayley. I hope you've changed now. You'd come in, you'd, she'd come in, you'd be watching a film and then say an ambulance went past on <laughs> On the film, she'd go, Cathy, did he ever tell you about the time I went in the ambulance? Me and Josie would go. End of film. You couldn't watch the rest. We got told all about why she was talking in an ambulance, how long she was at, at the air uh, casualty, how long she was in hospital. So end of film. Never got to see it. But we laughed about that years later. And then one of the neighbours in the road, I wasn't talking to her. And they were having a party, and I said to Hayley, there was only Hayley here then, um, I said to her, should we have a party? But she couldn't drink, could she? Because she was only 16, 17. And uh, I said, should we have a party? So we filled a wine bottle with water, and we sat in the front, <laughs> and we pretended to drink, but we were pretending to be drunk as well. We put put the music on in the hallway, and... We often laugh about that. She says, Cathy, remember when we pretended we had the party in your path and uh, we were drunk, but we never even had a drink. It was water in the wine bottle. I said, yeah. I said, they good memories, as I say, but they were too good. They were two of my favourite kids What I had them. Do you, for, some Forrester, no. God, I can't think. Let me have a think. I know. Josie Fowler, that was her name, yeah, but that Josie, you and Hayley were my very, very favourites, what he had here. Carl was another one. Carl ended up being a name. Um, he was a... He was a He was a train a porter and he was a... Um, he worked on the airlines and he come here one time to visit me and he said, yeah, I'll get in the car. He was in a big jeep and at the bottom of my road at the time, it was like open ground up and down to well he took me he gets me in there and he's riding around this thing i was shit myself i'm telling you but that was carl that i that done that i can't remember if he's been back here since but i was a i was away somewhere one time and a woman come up to me and she said to me is your name kathy i said yeah she said oh i think you know my son and so she's saying his name and that. And I said, oh, yeah. I said, he was one of my foster kids. She said, I know. She said, he often talks about you. She said, he had a laugh. He's married now. And uh, she said, he often spoke about you uh, when the time he spent with you. He had terrible, terrible, I hope you still haven't, Carl, terrible smelly feet. And he'd come in from college or what have you, and I'd say, get the shoes in the entry. You're not bringing them in. Get them out in the entry because his feet stunk. Uh, he'd, he'd be sitting here in the living room and you'd go, oh, my God, the smell. So I don't know if he still has got smelly feet, but that was then. So we hope you liked the, that little tale. You know, was telling me. And it's only when I think of little things from my past that come up that I think to, think to tell you these stories. So you'd have to bear with me because I know you all keep saying to me, keep them coming, keep them coming. That put, puts me under pressure and I don't like that. I like to just do it when I'm sitting relaxed and I feel like telling a story. I will do it then. But I can't just do it on the spirit at the moment. It's when these memories pop into my mind and I go, oh, yeah, I'll tell them about that. And if anyone's going to say about this little spot on me thing, I... I picked it, I scratched at it, and done a day, made a little scab on it. But it's all right, don't worry about it, everything's fine. And John's fine, aren't you, John? Yeah. John?
give them a wave. John's fine. So thank you everyone for asking about him and Connie and that and saying your prayers. Keep the prayers coming. We still need them. We definitely still need them. Uh, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed the story. Don't forget, please share it to your Facebook or your Instagram or that to keep the uh, views because when people comment, as you keep commenting, that keeps it up in the views. When no one comments or you're not sharing it, that it goes down and that doesn't help me because I don't, I don't get monetized on some things, uh, on, on all of them. I'm not monetized on every video I put up. So please share it away and tell your friends and add your friends and that because that really helps me. And I appreciate all the help you're doing to do that and and when you leave a comment and i appreciate that so thanks very much love you all i'll go for now and i hope you like that little story i told you when i think of another one i'll tell you it. bye for now